Oh. Okay, wow. I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> this is... This might be the last one that I expected. God of openness. Where all gaps between people can be bridged. That is my ideal. He's a light mythic. Kind of redundant with, uh, with Ash, but okay. He is fucking huge. <laughs> I love him. He's really cool. I thought he was gonna be like a dragon, but no, he's just an even bigger bovine. Okay. I okay. A light mythic is interesting. Didn't we get a light mythic like not that long ago? Maybe maybe he has been a while. I guess it was probably Ash, right? And Ash was like eight months ago. I thought we were gonna get an anima mythic. So that was my live reaction. I think I was mostly just surprised to see Asker so soon. I thought for sure that we were gonna get him much later. I always assumed that this plot with Asker and Nebula was gonna go on beyond book six, but I guess not. I did review Asker during the live stream, but I think there were some points that I maybe understated, so we'll go through it again real quick. Illuminating Horn, Exolite Special Trigger, he gets he gets four different effects if he exists during combat, basically. So he gets all stats plus five, he gets guaranteed follow-up attack, he gets deals damage equal 20% of unit's defense, and reduces damage from foe's attacks by 20% of unit's defense. And then he gets the Beast Infantry effect. I think uh, during this stream I probably understated just how powerful this effect was because this is non-percentage based damage reduction. So skills like dual lifts perp and deadeye and all that stuff, it's not going to pierce this. So if Asker has 60 defense, which is pretty reasonable honestly with support effects and stuff, if, if he has 60 defense, then he is just going to take minus 12 damage on every hit. And that is damage reduction that is scaling with his defense, so you're already reducing the damage you're taking with your defense. I'm not sure how you kill Asker. <laughs> I guess uh, the nice thing is that he, I guess the, the counterplay is that he doesn't get mythic blessings, so his HP will be stuck at 40. We do have his stats now, he has high attack, very high defense, he has 43 defense, like 31 res, and he has an awkward 26 speed. I'm curious to see if people will try to run him in sort of a, a savior ball sort of situation where you put him out front as your uh, near tank and then you have like a distance tank like Fjorm or Henriette behind him. I could see it working actually. Especially since he has a new beast slot skill called Attack Defense Bulwark. It's basically obstruct but it goes out two spaces from him for ranged enemies. And also, inflicts attack defense minus 4 on foe during combat, restores 7 HP to unit after combat. Pretty interesting, basically making a version of Obstruct that's actually usable and desirable. Because these days, whenever they want to make like a desirable B-slot skill effect, it seems like they have to slap on some, uh, some minus stats during combat. I'm thinking of like Trey skills and the tempo skill that we got one of. Lulz are the obvious example. The 7 HP after combat is interesting, especially since you can stack it with Mystic Boost in your seal slot, so you can just get 13 HP healed after every combat. It seems like a really good beast slot skill, honestly. The problem is that in order to fodder for it, you have to kill Asker, and that's, uh, <laughs> Asker is honestly a very valuable unit. Uh, just having one copy of him is obviously very valuable, but then merging him is also going to be good. Uh, for more points in Ether Raids. We do know that Attack Defense Bulwark is is restricted to just melee infantry, so that's pretty limiting. If you want to use this skill on, like, Ashnard, then you'll have to make do with Obstruct, unfortunately. Also, his C slot perf is insane. At start of turn, if a unit is within two spaces of any allies from a different title, grants Residence Blades and Residence Shields, to unit and all allies within two spaces of unit. So the allies that are from the same game, like Ash and Peony and Air, like they'll still get the buffs as long as you have a different title unit near them. And also, if unit or any of those foes ally, oh sorry, 
If unit or any of those allies has their special cooldown count at its maximum value, grant special cooldown count minus one to them. So this was what I focused on during the live stream because that is obviously a very good effect. It's uh, obviously the easy comparison is to Legendary Hector. Legendary Hector has the same effect, except it's kind of awkward on him because, well, for one, these days, if you're going to run an armor unit, it's kind of hard to justify running an armor unit that doesn't have a save skill. But even still, uh, Legendary Hector's C slide skill is very strong. In fact, it actually has the potential advantage over this, which is that Legendary Hector's C slide effect, it activates regardless of distance, whereas this one seems to activate only for those allies within two spaces. So that's something you'll have to consider. Not gonna lie, I almost forgot what, what Resonance Shields does. So that's the one that gives you defense and res plus four, and it negates enemies' follow-up attacks. Which is honestly a really good effect. Once again, Asker is gonna be a really powerful tank just on his own, even if he can't get Mythic Blessings. I'm kind of interested in seeing people actually use them that way, because it's not often that people actually use combat mythics. I've seen people do like, uh, they'll like initiate with Air or Ular. Freya is kind of long gone at this point, I don't really see people use her. But yeah, I think Asker definitely has that potential, and even if he somehow ages in two years, you'll still be able to use him to grant all these different buffs, so I think he's a very strong unit. I would maybe still give the edge to Ash just because she's got the warping shenanigans. But yeah. Here's our banner. I think Colorless is definitely the best. You have Asker, who's new, along with Medius and Ashera. Uh, I still like using Ashera. I don't know. I think people generally rate her lower than some of the other Astro Mythics. Like, she's definitely not as useful as Plumeria or whatever. But I think Ashera is like a solid middle tier Astra Mythic. I think her Null Panic effect is good, and it lets me use units that rely on buffs. And then Medius speaks for himself. Not only is he good in Aether Race, he's also good in Summoner Duels, so uh, definitely, if I summon on this banner, my my emphasis will be on Colorless. I might pull all the colors, except, except uh, I think green was the one I wasn't interested in. I'm thinking, depending on how the Summer Micaiah summons go, I may want to summon on this as well. It all depends on whether or not I have enough warps left over to spark. But anyway, I got sidetracked. Red is the next best color. You have Plumeria, Nana, and Ascendant Merida. Ascendant Merida, she's strong on her own, but then she also has the Ascendant for it. So there you go. And then Plumeria is just Plumeria. Blue has Peony, Saros, and Dimitri. Peony emerges are always good. You really can't go wrong with any merges honestly i still don't have a saros i would like one she came out a year and a half ago then finally green has arthur odor and uh oh Selica. okay there you go Selica. she won't get her remix i don't think until like uh, february maybe like december Fe february somewhere in that zone so i really wouldn't count on that Oh, I went ahead and checked the Legendary Mythic Calendar. She's coming back in March, so there you go. That might be an indication that she'll get her remix then. So yeah, like I said, I really wouldn't count on Selica getting a good remix anytime soon. Arthur actually has some pretty good skill fodder. He has Cron Vulture, Attack Speed Ideal, and I think Speed Res Menace. But even still, Green's not that good, in my opinion. If you're finding it hard to save orbs in the face of all these powerful Mythic units that will make your gameplay uh, better and easier. Just remember, you don't have to play Aether Raids. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, embrace that myself. <laughs> Maybe someday I will uh, practice what I preach. But yeah, for now, yeah, I'm thinking that it would be pretty nice to have Asker. So, depending on how the Summer Micaiah summons go, I may summon on this banner. I'll spark for Asker. And that's going to be it for this reaction. So thanks for watching, subscribe for more Fae content, and I'll catch you guys next time.